by Security Queensland has quarantined a farm west of um, uh, Townsville in North Queensland uh, following a confirmed case of cucumber model, uh, green model mosaic virus. This is the first case of the virus in Queensland and it appears to be an isolated case and we have moved quickly to quarantine the farm and prevent further spread of the disease. Um, this property was surveyed as a result of a trace that we received from the Northern Territory Department of Primary Industries and Fisheries uh, in relation to a line of watermelon seed um, that was tested in New South Wales and found to be infected with CGMMV. As a result of that advice from the Northern Territory, we undertook surveillance on the property on the 10th of uh, April, uh, where we took a range of samples, and one of those samples has subsequently um, been confirmed as being positive for CGMMV. Um, while this property is under quarantine, we'll be undertaking tracing investigations in relation to uh, movements of uh, potential risk material onto and off that property to try and determine the source of the infection on the property um, and also uh, the possibility of where it might have spread to um, from the property. So CGMMV was detected in Northern Territory in September 2014. Uh, during uh, November and December uh, 2014, we conducted uh, a surveillance for CGMMV across the major cucurbit growing areas of Queensland uh, we did not detect CGMMV uh, at that time. In February, the Consultative Committee, uh, which is the technical committee that oversees um, responses to plant pest and disease incursions in Australia, um, determined that it was not technically feasible to eradicate CGMMV in the Northern Territory. However, um, the information that we've currently got in relation to this property in Charters Towers, um, we believe that we uh, have identified the source of the infection. We believe that it's an isolated case at this stage based on the information we have available. Uh, and we believe that it's technically feasible to eradicate um, this disease on this property. Uh, We've obviously advised the, um, the property owner and we're working very closely with the property owner who's been extremely uh, cooperative. I would just ask that um, uh, the public and the media uh, respect the property owner's privacy. Um, obviously this is a very concerning situation for them um, and we would also ask that nobody enters that property without the permission of the owner um, because it can result in spread of the disease. I'd also like to reinforce that CGMMV um, uh, is in no way harmful to human health and fruit um, uh, from host plants is in no way a danger to human health. I might leave it at that and see if you've got any questions. Yeah, okay. Um, so you said you've identified the source. What is the source? Well, we, we, we um, followed up a trace in relation to an infected line of watermelon seed, and that's why we surveyed the property. Um, because you knew that they were using that seed? Well, we knew that they'd been supplied a small quantity of um, seedlings um, from that seed line, um, and so we followed that up and did surveillance on the property to see if there was any risk of it being infected and of course we've had a confirmed detection as a result of that surveillance. And where did those seeds or seedlings come from? Um, the seeds, um, uh, the seedlings came from a nursery in Queensland that grew the seedlings on behalf of the grower. And how, where did they get the seed from? Uh, the seed was supplied by a seed company, Australian seed company. And is it um, an imported seed? Yes, all, pretty well all cucurbit seeds imported. Right. Um, and so now my understanding is that the government, um, the federal government, um, put in mandatory biosecurity checks of seeds. Yes. Uh, when did that happen? Well, they've always had uh, mandatory biosecurity checks um, on cucurbit seed, um, but they tightened those requirements uh, late last year in response to the detection of CGMMV in the Northern Territory. Do you know when these seeds came into the country? 
We don't know exactly, no, not at this stage, but we believe it was before those requirements were tightened by the Australian Government. And are there other growers who would have had those seeds or could have had those seedlings? We're investigating that, um, but at this stage, uh, the only connections that we've got in relation to this line of seed is plantings in the Northern Territory associated with infected properties in the Northern Territory and this one property in, um, in North Queensland. We believe all other seed was recalled by the seed company. How is the disease spread? Disease can be spread in infected plant material, uh, on uh, contaminated equipment, uh, in uh, soil and water. Um, so it's a bit like the Panama disease? A little bit like the Panama disease, yeah. It's very easily spread um, on anything that's contaminated with the virus and the virus can persist for uh, quite a length of time on um, materials and equipment. What sort of time? Uh, uh, days, weeks potentially. And what kind of a disease is it? It's a virus. Right. And um, so what does it actually do to the plants? Uh, it causes mottling, um, it causes uh, um, uh, reduced yield, um, it causes necrosis and um, an effect on the fruit that uh, are soft, um, wet areas in the fruit um, that make it unsuitable for sale. And the Northern Territory, what's happened to their industry? Uh, well, there's 25 infected properties known in the Northern Territory now. It's had a significant impact on the cucurbit industry, the melon industry in the Northern Territory. And is there any chance of that crossing into Queensland in part plant or soil material? Um, well, we've got restrictions in place that prohibit the movement of um, risk materials, um, cucurbit host plant material, or um, machinery or, or equipment that's been associated with the growing of cucurbits in the Northern Territory. What, what into sort Queensland. of restrictions? Uh, well, a, a prohibition. You can't bring them in here without uh, approval. Right. Um, is it possible, though, I mean, things I know with the um, Panama disease, there are things like pallets which carry fruit from the Northern Territory um, into Queensland and vice versa and around farms. Um, I suppose it's, it's almost impossible to try and stop the spread. Um, it's difficult. It's difficult. And they've been unable to uh, prevent spread in the Northern Territory of this disease. Does there need to be stricter biosecurity, maybe cross-border biosecurity, now that we've had the Panama disease and we have this melon disease? Um, well, we have uh, strict requirements in place. Obviously, Queensland has an enormous border um, and trying to monitor um, uh, movements across that border is extremely difficult. So is there, any, is there any plan to try and tighten that up? Because we now have two industries under threat, potentially. Um, I'll just repeat that we've got an enormous border with uh, numerous crossings across it and trying to monitor that border. Um, is extremely difficult. And so um, what, what makes you think you can eradicate it when it's been deemed um, not able to be eradicated? Um, because we, we think we know what the source of the disease is. Uh, we think that it's, if, it, if that is the source that the disease has not been present on the property for uh, any significant length of time. Uh, the evidence that we've got from the surveillance to date shows it's not widespread on the property. We've only found it in a single crop. Um, the property is isolated from other cucurbit growing um, properties. Uh, there's about 20 k's between it and the closest other cucurbit growing property in Charters Towers. And it's a significant different, uh, distance to commercial cu uh, cucurbit growing areas in the rest of Queensland. So it's isolated. It's been there a short period of time. It doesn't look like it's widespread. We think we know the source of the disease. All of that adds up to um, we've got a reasonable uh, chance of success of eradicating it if, it, if it's not more widespread. Um, how worrying is it to have this disease? What, what range of vegetables and produce can it affect? Um, melons, rock melons, um, anything in the melon line and vegetable cucurbit, so pumpkins, uh, loofah, gourds, zucchinis, squash, all of the cucurbit vegetables. And so in terms of quarantine, what's happening now? Is that, do the, the, the growers, um, are they unable to continue operations? Yes, at this stage he's unable to move any risk materials off that property. 
Um, so any equipment, any uh, plant material um, of uh, the cucurbitaceae family. Um, Including the fruit? Yes, yes. And can it be transferred in the fruit? Y yes, potentially, yes. Okay, terrific. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, no problems. Mm -hmm.